is up to. So balance. <laughs> How many of you are really coordinated and balanced, okay? How many used to be and it's kind of gone away? Absolutely. I, I found a few things of... Uh, some of I was actually I Googled uh, your last name. How do they balance their lives? This is one of your homes. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Bless you. Uh, some of you, I, I got other photos. You all are doing life. Uh, you're very talented of how you're able to fit it all in. Uh, how many? How many know moms can do it? This, you know, they can. They're guys. They're just beyond us on the ability to multitask. Okay. Uh, here's some. Here's some things. Stand on top of a tel telephone pole or. Uh, actually, those kinds of things. These are aspects when you think of balance in the physical. These are the things you're balancing day to day, to day many of you. And that's just an example of how do you get all this stuff? How do you do this? And coming into 2024, preparing for 2024, how do you have balance going into 2024 is our subject today. Here are good things to be reminded because immediately what everybody thinks it's oh it's about time management you know I've done that put the the big rocks in first and then the little rocks and sand and you know but but I want to challenge us today that it's something much more important some reminders are this Proverbs chapter 16 in their hearts humans plan their course how many have got a plan that's nice. And then the Lord establishes the plans, right? I mean, it, we so many times want to do it our way, and it doesn't, it, he, it, it's, he did it his way, not he did it my way, okay? So th just know it. But here's the good thing, for we know that we're God's handiwork, and that means when I used to be called, I was a piece of work, I took that positively. Creating G Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance. He already had today planned for us. He gave us breath to step into his plan. Isn't that a cool thing to be reminded of? Jeremiah, you've heard this, 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to what? Prosper. Now, we, love, we always think that it has dollars and cents connected to it. That's not true. Health is a great provision. Love, contentment, hope. I mean, I could go on and on, but it's, it's to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. And then we have Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things, everybody say all. All things he will, for, will bring to good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We've all been called. Some of us don't want to take the call, <laughs> but we've all been called as believers. So this balancing thing, starting the new year, with balance is the challenge. So we're going to be in First Peter. We're going to take a look at the scripture here uh, about uh, using the Amplified more than anything. But as we move this way, I, I just let me just say this: We've seen in 2023 God do a lot. Amen. If it's not your own life, you've seen other people. How many have you seen God carry people through a death of a loved one? Absolutely. How, how many have you seen God bring hope to a very difficult situation, an outcome, you know, lead someone? How about healing of a broken heart or maybe illness in a body? We've seen that, right? And how many of us in here would say, I want that and more for 2024? Some of you are really on it. Over here, pinch your neighbor because they're falling asleep. No, but isn't that our heart? We don't want man's manifested provision. We want God's. And that's what I want us to be remindful of and as we study today. What does God have in store? So 1 Peter chapter 5, this is out of the Amplified. It says, be well tasked. Be well financed. Be well balanced. I love the way this uh, translation works. It says temperate, sober-minded, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Withstand him. Be firm in the faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same, meaning identical sufferings, right, uh, has been appointed to everyone else that has really come this way, all Christians. Th this, this scripture, uh, and when you look at the e, uh, ESV, uh, English Standard Version or a New Living Translation says this, be sober-minded, be watchful, resist him, firm in your faith. It also says stay alert, watch out, stand firm, and be strong. So I tried to put together a graphic that might uh, depict this. The graphic is this. 
You've got this base, this fulcrum point, you know, and, and, and the, the be strong and stand, it's kind of this, this thing that everything hit, it, it pivots on or, or should I say balances on. And so over on the far left, stay alert, be vigilant, and then resist, all right, withstand because the devil's trying to take you down. Do you all believe that? Do you think the devil's really just hoping to make it inconvenient or uncomfortable? No, he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy you. Your dreams, your hopes, your relationships, whatever he can get to, he doesn't like you. Dancing with the devil is a song. You don't want to dance with the devil because he's going to take you out. It's no good, and everybody with you. And so we have this, this thought of well, how do we balance these things? What, what is this thing all about when you, when you think of this? So if you notice, it's not about what I'm bringing you today isn't about time management. Now, that's good. But it's about how do you really truly have the right things going into 2024 that will bring you victory and bring all that God has for you and your family. Thankful for this vision. You know, when you think about... Um, well-balanced. <laughs> I've got some, some toys here. So, looky here. This is not a parking cone. It's a toy, right? So let's just say this is, this is our, our balance beam, right? This is your life. And, and the devil's over here, and he's trying to weigh down and crush, and, and you're over here, and, and, and you've got this thing going, Amen. You've got this wrestle every day. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. And, and yet, here's what happened to Bill Williams. Bill Williams kind of had a little religion, and I'm talking about this part right on the end, not the cone. And, 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 or imagine this, and I'm trying to balance life on a little religion. And, and if you'll notice, it's very difficult because you not only can go this way, but you can, you can go this way. It's, it's three-dimensional, right? I mean, you can go every which way. It's very unstable. How many know that religion alone doesn't get you anywhere except in trouble? All right? And then, and then I, I, found a, I found Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That is the number one thing you need to do. And he began to at least bring some dimension into my life. Now, I was still needing to be transformed, but he, he made it to where I'm not at least going this way. I still may be going this way. Right? How many, how, this is where most of us live. Right? Some of you are like, no. I don't even know what you're talking about. Come see me later because I need to learn. Uh, so, you, so you're here and at least you, and some of you like the game. You like, you know, that board thing. Woo, look at me. I can do, I can dance with the devil and come back too. You know what I mean? And yes, Jesus is full of grace and he will always bring you back to balance if you come to him. But can I propose something to you? Stay. If we get solid footing, we get a good firm foundation to be able to stand truth in our minds and hearts, and all of a sudden we're trying to bounce life, guess what? There is not as much wobble. There's a lot more firm because it's on truth, and the devil has to do so much more to get you to even teeter. Do you see why? Oh, and then you say, well, I, 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 I want more than that. Okay, then, then you step it up, get further into the word and the relationship with God, and guess what? There is a firm foundation on the teeter. Do you see kind of how this is going? I'm trying to give you an illustration because I am a picture guy, and I wanted to make sure we could at least get that concept before us. We have this... this this struggle, I look around this room and I don't see anybody that doesn't have a little balance issue every now and then. Except maybe they're in the back. I mean, I don't know, right? How many, how many, oh, let me, I'll test, the, I'll test here, okay? How many of you work a little too much sometimes? How many, or no, you, wait, excuse me, you know somebody that works way too much. And maybe they just don't get enough rest or maybe they don't get enough sleep. Did you know that if you are working too much and you're not getting enough rest and you're not sleeping enough, you're not eating the right foods, you're, you, it'll cause you problems. Do you know why? Well, yeah, pastor, it's biophysical. There's another reason that I want to bring to your attention because the devil knows the things of this side of heaven, right? If, realize this. If you're out of balance in any area, your thought life, I can just make a long list, the enemy is going to take advantage of it. We know that if you've lived more than a week, right? He'll take advantage of that. And so when we, for instance, some people that talk too much, 
that's out of balance. And yet, there's, you're like, Pastor, you just convicted, indicted yourself. Anyway, or, or how about this? There's some people that don't talk enough. That's also out of balance. They don't communicate well. But the enemy will use that however they can. I'm, I, I'm, we need balance. We, so you say, well, how do I keep the priorities of life and all that? How do I stay in balance? The short answer is you can't ever get there permanently. It's always work. Hello? It's always straightening something out. It's always rechecking where you're at. Kind of like doing a balance inventory. You, begin, you take a moment, you get still with God, you, you, and you ask God, am I out of balance in any areas of my life? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to um, imagine something. Just because I'm talking about it, I think there's some people right now that can say, I already know some areas that, in my life. See, it doesn't take a lot for us to imagine being out of balance. Here's the thing, though. The devil loves to go after people who are out of balance. And more importantly, what's amplified is if we're out of balance and know it and do nothing about it, he loves those people. Because we're not going to turn to the, to, to the solution. We're going to just, oh, oh, you know, it's like uh, that f famous song that many of you heard. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. Come on, help me finish it. If I weren't for bad luck, I've had no luck at all. You have to be older to know that this, anyway. <laughs> that was hee-haw. Do you remember that? Somehow my little device here has given me wonderful fits here. Maybe, maybe you're out of balance is watching too much TV or Netflix. Oh, now, Pastor, you're meddling. Maybe you're surfing the Internet too much. Maybe you're gaming a little more than normal. Maybe you're going to the gym. It was originally a good idea, but you're staying there too long. Maybe you're recreating more than normal. Maybe you're eating the wrong foods, whatever it is, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to be careful not to move into excess because even there is where the devil will show up because you're out of balance. Let me suggest something to us. That when you're unhappy, when you're having too many bad days or too many sad days or too many mad days, you need to check and see if you're out of balance somewhere in your life. So many times in our marriage, my wife and I, I would be frustrated. That's a, that's a nice word for angry. And it had nothing to do with her, but she got it. Because in another area of my life, I was out of balance. I wasn't healthy. I wasn't help. Does this group at least get it? I, just, I don't know about anybody else. I just want to make sure we're all moving together here. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm yeah, giving testimony up here. But check. Because a lot of times it just needs a little adjustment. It needs a little truth to move in. It needs a really a realignment to some degree. And I know in this room there are people that, that, that I want to have you leave here with some tools, okay? But, but i got to tell you something. I got, uh, well, let me just share something and suggest them. No matter how much Jesus you have in your life, you can't break the natural laws and expect everything to work out in life. Now let me give you an example. You say, well, I, I, I just pray to feel good. I, I pray, you know. Uh, let me say this. If you're not getting enough rest, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're always feeling lousy, guess what? It doesn't matter how much Jesus you got. You, you can't defile treating your body bad. How about this? Oh, I, I, I just... I just need this, and I mean, I just want to be, and let me say this, if you don't relax enough, you know, you don't enjoy yourself, you don't laugh often, you don't take a pause, guess what, you're not going to be happy. Staying balanced. The scripture is talking to us that you don't stay balanced, because if you stay unbalanced, and if you're not working at it constantly, the devil's going to move in. Let, let me, let me, let's kind of dive in one, it, it, verse 8 here, look. So well-balanced, we've got that. But be vigilant and cautious. When you wake up in the morning, are you vigilant and cautious? Because it says what? How many times? All times. That there is a war. You say, well, not in my house. Not on my watch. How many of you have ever had a <clears throat> strong discussion in your home? How about in the car? Has anybody been immune to any of this? I want your medication because I... But as we go into 2024, we're going to face some great 
and wonderful opportunities. I, I just speak that over all of us. I speak it over. But we're also going to face this thing called the roaring lion that wants to devour and kill you and steal your joy, rob your hope, definitely mess up your testimony. See, he seeks someone to devour. Don't be seized or, or taken under siege by the devil this year. Amen? Let's make a vow that stepping out of today and into tomorrow, it's a new year, it's a new day, it's a day of the Lord. It's the year of the Lord. Amen? There's so many people that have good work ethics. But you know what? If, and I've seen some even work hard and work hard in the name of Jesus. But you know, if you're not careful... You're going to get burned up and burned out. You're going to get sick. You're going to pay for it. So I don't care how much you say, oh, I've got Jesus. You've got to balance all the aspects of your life or you're going to have problems and the devil's going to capitalize on them. Okay, that's nice, Pastor. Thank you for encouraging us. <laughs> Let's go on to verse 9. Withstand him. And be firm. Notice I'm not talking about starting with your priority list and, and allocation of time. Because I believe if your foundation is firm, if you're standing on the right place in the right way, that all the rest will fall into place if we turn to him. So we see that you resist the devil. When do you do that? If somebody said, well, when do you start, pastor, resisting the devil? Can I say the best time to do it? The minute he starts. Hello? The minute he starts, you don't wait till somehow there's a deep-rooted problem and you finally go, well, I guess he's a liar. Well, I guess I better stand up again. If you're that far along, it's going to be a hard way out. Amen? Yeah. So if you're walking through the mall and some pretty little thing or big thing, I don't know, something pretty catches your eye, they're trying to speak to the guys and the girls. I, I used to say this with my, my sons. We'd be in mall and there's Victoria Secret. And I said, count the tile, count the tile, count the tile. <laughs> Count the tile. Because, you know, I've never seen those that big. I mean, as far as the lingerie or the clothing. That's what I was talking about. Um, but the minute, okay, let me get back on track. The minute, the second the devil begins to lie to you, you stop and say, you're a liar. This is aggressive. I'm not talking about, well, do you mind? If I call you a liar, he is trying to kill and destroy you. I don't want to show hands, please don't, because we are, there's video cameras in here. But I know a lot of you are concealed carry weapon type of people. Some of you have, I don't know, but you're ready to go. But you know what? Lies of the devil, we will dance with, we'll ignore, we'll let it creep in, and we're not to do it. You tell him he's a liar. If he tempts you, you don't wait for an hour or two. You say, no, I'm not going to do that. And you go to another screen or you turn the thing off. Let me go there. We need to be more, I'm going to use this term, violent. Hear me say that. Aggressive, maybe if that's better for immediate, with temptation. You know, we, we instead of just saying, well, I just wish it wasn't, I just wish I wasn't so tempted. You know, I just got that thing. My eye just sees the pretty things and stop it. Unless you've married them. Then you just talk all you want. We've got to be aggressive with this as we go into 2024. What did Jesus say about it? You say, well, Pastor Violent seems just a little bit harsh. Let me, let me bring some words here. Remember what Jesus says about it, if your eye offends you, if your eye causes you to, to sin or stumble, what does it say? Gouge it out. Oh, that's not violent. <laughs> or if your hand causes, offends you, causes you to cut it off. You didn't know. You didn't know the verbiage is not mamby-pamby. It's, it's aggressive. Stop it. Now, granted, he's not saying take a spoon and gouge your eye out, or I'd be blind twice, 10,000 times over, but... Right, But he's, he's trying to say, look, get the picture of if you're tempted at looking at things that you shouldn't be, cut it off, stop it, count the tile, yank the Wi-Fi, unplug the Wi-Fi, whatever your thing is, right? Change it. And if your hand, cut, don't cut off the hand, okay? But stop what you're doing. Stop going into the places that are difficult. I'll just tell you something. I, my wife, uh, this is way early in my journey, but my wife, I'd say, well, I'm just, I just went out playing pool with the boys. Where'd you go? Well, so-and-so, so-and-so. Was there a bar? Yeah. I, 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 I was playing pool. Were there girls in the room? 
yeah, but honey, I'm, I'm true to you. Was there drinks involved? Well, you know, I, get out of there. Hello? Hello? Because I, 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 A plus B plus C can equal failure if you're not careful. Well, I just went to shop. That is a lie. Tell the devil it's a lie. Because you don't want your mind caught up. Everything you did in your past, it's there in 3D color, right? Let's just not start taping anymore. I'm getting all off into it. Sorry. Cut it off aggressively, quickly. Rooted. Established. Strong. I'm speaking this over you. I hope you receive it. Say, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. What does it say? Strong. Immovable. Determined. That's what we need to be, Christians. That's what we need to be to have a 2024 that's blessed by God. So let me bring you in some practical. How do you stand? How do you stand firm in our faith? Number one, it requires intentionality and reliance on God's strength because you're going to get weary at this. So how do you improve your stand? Here's just some, some great little, again, trying to t give you some, some bullets. Know the truth. If I could ever tell you what will give you a better year it's the word of god if you really need it's not a fulcrum like this it is this solid foundation folks the more truth that you have the less you're going to be rocked and when you are rocked there is a stability that you have that nobody else unless they know the word of god and i'm not saying you have to become a theologian but get in the word of god it's the most powerful thing you can have it's got the greatest legacy it's got the greatest payback the roi the return on investment or effort it's amazing. Let it shape your beliefs. Let it shape your thoughts and your actions and understand his truth. There's ways to do it with print, audio. Sit down with somebody else and say, you know what? We don't know how to read, but I heard, the, let's re refer stories about Jesus, okay? That'll help you. Cultivate a relationship with God. Cultivate. Does anybody know what farming looks like? The gardens. Cultivate. I'm just making sure. There's plowing involved. There's sometimes some dust. But you got to break up the clod before the seed can get in. Hello? you got to water it. you got to, you got to let the truth get in. Prayer is a great plow of the brain. The Word of God is too, but develop a consistent prayer life. Spend time with, with the Lord in, in ways. Seek His guidance. Seek His wisdom. Seek His strength. Become dependent on Him. Have a healthy relationship with Him. The next thing, number three, guard your mind. We've talked about that a little bit. Diligently try to keep negative thoughts. Some of us are half cup, cup half full. Some are half, cup half empty. Be careful. Be careful not to just always run around, find everything that's wrong. That's easy. But if you dwell in what isn't, you're not going to get in on the supernatural. Because faith is of the unseen. If you see somebody that's a knucklehead, you're looking at one. Okay, hello, I'm your head knucklehead. you got to realize he's not done with me. So when I mess up, if you're looking at me, you're going to be disappointed in my flesh. I'm disappointed in my flesh. But when you see Jesus that's hopefully inside me and it reflected through me in such a way, you can say, you know what, he's a piece of work and God's not done with him yet. Look at all the many times he's been to the woodshed. <laughs> Am I the only one in here getting this? Man, he was talking to me. All right. But fill your things, put in your mind, if you start seeing everything that's broken, you know, you go home with the same person and, and you, you know, the house is this and the yard's that and she or he's that and they are, change that and start putting in the atmosphere of mind what is true, what is noble, what is praiseworthy. That's a, Philipp, a Philippians 4.8. Number four, take every thought captive. I sure wish I'd done that sooner. Because something about my thoughts and my mouth, they just go together. <laughs> How many ever heard the term mouthing off? Boy, have I done that. And it's usually because it was on what was on my mind. And I hadn't got it all figured out, right? So I just let it out. It's kind of like farting. The only person that enjoys it is when the person that let it. <laughs> that wasn't in my notes. <laughs> but it works. When negative thoughts arise, doubt, fear, you need to confront it. Confront it right away with the truth of the word. What God sees about you, put some word in your heart. Lean on the Holy Spirit, number five. 
The fifth thing is the Holy Spirit's our helper. It's our advocate. He's for us. Depend on him, meaning don't just haul off and hope he blesses what you decide. Ask him to lead you through decisions. Ask you to be, help your choose or be better, make better choices. Yield to his spirit. Try to learn to hear more from the spirit. The sixth one is persevere. Trials are going to come our way in 2024, amen? I mean, I wish we could say it's all behind us. It's, that's 2023 and 2024 is just going to be, you know, like the love boat or something, you know. No, we're going to deal with it. But if you have that firm foundation and you can stand, and whatever comes your way, if you hold even that last thing, leaning on the Holy Spirit, and you persevere because they're going to come, trusting God with that the experiences are refining your faith, producing perseverance, yes, bringing about his purpose. Romans 8, 28 again will be reflected on that. So remember, standing firm is not a one-time decision. But daily commitment requires intentional choices, reliance on God's strength, and I'm going to give you one more support. Let me, let me just bounce over here real quick. Improving your balance. So you have the strength, you have the foundation, and now pursue God daily. Have clear priorities and creative, create margin. Does everybody know what a margin is? Have you ever tried to hole punch something and all the words are all there and you punch holes through it? Or how about no shock absorber? So margin is building time around it. Know when to say no. Let's practice that real quick. Some of you are going to struggle. You're going to lock jaw up. You're going to have, you know... No. No, thank you. That's the nice way of saying it. Absolutely no. Are you crazy? No. I mean, whatever you want to say. <laughs> and when de the devil tempts you, it, I'm not talking about the person you came with. When the devil tempts you, you just say, no, you're a liar. I'm not doing it. Allocate your energy. Get the firm foundation first. It's not a time. But make sure that you keep your best for the best. And be able to choose the better versus just the good. Amen? Manage your health. If you want to compete like an Olympian, you got to sleep like an Olympian. you got to eat like an Olympian. you got to train like an Olympian. Some of you say, well, no, I just want to be a couch potato and be a, a slug. High aspirations. God has a bigger plan for you. Either that or he's got a lot of witness that he wants to do off that couch. And I'll say one last thing, and that is do life with other believers. Not just do life with other people. Get with a group of people. And there's groups here, but you can do whatever group. Maybe it's a work group. Maybe it's a school group. Do life with people where God's at the center, because then you can talk through life's realities with a great heading, a compass. Amen? How do you balance 2024? We just reviewed it. Next week is going to be about... How do you soar in 2024? We're going to talk about the spirit. We're going to talk about how to get lift off and rising above it. You need to be there. It's going to be good. But both of these together, I think we're speaking to me first. So God bless y'all. Let's stand and we'll close in prayer. I want to add to our prayers this couple, mainly Gina. Most of you have been praying for Gina for some time. She had lung transplant about 8 to 12 weeks ago. And about three days, I'm going to say three days ago, they found some rejection um, markers. And she's in the hospital right now going through some treatments, uh, but a double lung transplant. And it totally, she was here Christmas Eve. Amazing difference. I uh, was on the verge of death. But we just need to lift her up too. And I'm sure there's others in this room. I, I'm going to ask you if you're bold enough. I don't need to know the details. Uh, if you would like to be included, just generically, I'm not going to call your need out, but I would like to have God, I'd like to, my, my need to be lifted in prayer this morning too. Just raise your hand if you have a need, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Okay, it's all over. Amen. Amen. I want you to look around real quick and then we're going to pray. This is the body of Christ. I know there's a second service. And you're going to be out there with other believers. That's the body of Christ. It's not about community church. But let me just say this, the power of two or more getting together in his name, no matter if it's on top of a roof or down on a, in a pickup or on a horse or wherever you might be, that is powerful. Don't leave that out of your year ahead. Amen?
All right. Sound good? Let's pray. Father God, thank you that your truth is what uh, matters. Father, it's good to know that uh, we can do certain things. We can welcome you into certain aspects of our life, and it fortifies us, Lord, as we balance life. And Lord, with you, the more of you that we have, the better we are. And so I pray for everyone in this room that we t today forward begin to allow you to be our steadfast base. Help us stand. Help us to be in balance. Convict us or remind us areas where we need to tighten. Lord, if there's areas we're out of balance in, help us get it back into place because we want to be the best for you. We want to soar in 2024. Lord, we lift up the needs of this room that hands raised. You know every one of them, and you're a supernatural, powerful God. In the name of Jesus, touch them, meet them, invade those places. And Gina Lacombe, we lift up collectively. God, touch your lungs, touch your body. If you're using medicine, that's great, but Lord, you're the supernatural physician. We ask you right now in that room, in that hospital bed, you'd touch her and restore whatever's out of whack. Realign it into perfection only like you can. And we all, the body of believers, pray it in the name above every name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. You may just be dismissed. Say hi to somebody on the way out. Amen. <laughs>